Hello and welcome to the Blue Open Studio tutorial video series. The topic of this video will be basic shapes. In this video, we will be discussing the various shapes available in Blue Open Studio, and we will demonstrate configuring an ellipse, drawing a rounded rectangle, drawing an open polygon, drawing a closed polygon, and configuring a rectangle to display tag data and static text. Inside of Blue Open Studio, there are six basic shapes. We have line, rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, and an ellipse can be configured into four subshapes, closed polygon, and open polygon. As you notice by the footnote, that the rectangle is the only shape that can natively contain text or caption. Any of the other basic shapes, in order to put a text or caption field uh, with it, you would have to put a text box or another rectangle on top of it. And we'll show you how to do that later in the video. So before we begin drawing the basic shapes in Blue Open Studio, I am going to copy a modified version of the main screen uh, into my application. So I'm going to navigate in Windows Explorer to the BOS training files extracted zip folder. And in the screen folder, you'll see three files, main.scc, main.tag, and main.txt. These three file types compose a screen inside of Blue Open Studio. You need all three of these in order to create or have a proper screen configured inside of the application. Uh, the SCC is the actual graphics. The tag is the cross-reference or the individual database of the tags used on that screen. And then the TXT is additional configuration information for the screen itself. So what I'm going to do is copy all of them and come back to my training application folder and go into the screen subfolder and I will paste. And I will just overwrite all three and then I will open Blue Open Studio. Once Blue Open Studio is opened, I'll expand screens and open my main. And you see that there are already some objects on this screen. And this is just for your reference if you want to look at them to see how some of them can be configured. Uh, but we will start with an ellipse. So when you open a screen in Blue Open Studio, the graphics ribbon menu should automatically pop up. And you'll see by the default layout, uh, the third group from the left will be shapes. And I'll just click on ellipse. And you notice that I can't click and drag an object in. I have to click to select it. I will hold down my left mouse and click and drag to create an ellipse. And now to get into the properties, we can do one of three methods. We can right click, select properties, or as you can see, we can shortcut key, alt and enter, or we can double click. In the object properties window, the layout for the majority of the objects will be the same. Across the top, you'll have a push pin in the upper left. And what this does is this allows the window to stay open. It persists the window and I can move this around. And then depending on what object that I select, it will display the properties of that object. If I don't have the pin selected, if I click away from the object or the window, that window automatically closes. Now next to that is a replace button. And this essentially allows you to do a replace of tags or text in that object itself. If I click on it now though, it'll give me a message that there are no tags or strings in this object to edit. So I won't be able to edit any. Then we have a hint, and this is a tool tip. So this will pop up during runtime with whatever text we put in here. So I'm going to put in hint goes here. And then once I run the application and I view this, if I hover my mouse over this object, you'll see a little tool tip come up with that text. Then we have a drop-down list, and this list will show any of the objects that are selected or grouped. So if we had a grouped object with multiple shapes inside of it, 
they would all show up here. And when we get into that and into animation, you will see how this list is beneficial and how it can be used for uh, editing the application. And then we have style, border, and background. And these are, for the most part, unique to whatever shape that you have selected. Uh, for us, for the basic shapes, border and background will pretty much be the same. You will either be able to select no line, solid line, or dashed. And when I do this, you see that the object automatically updates. I don't have to click away or click OK. And then the color, I can change that as well. And it, once again, it automatically updates and I can change the weight. If the background configuration is available, you'll see it here and you can either do no fill or fill and then once again, change the color. And if we select no fill, this isn't like a blank fill. This is truly transparent. So I could lay this over top of another object and would be able to see through it without any problems. So I'm going to just leave it the way it is. And for the style for the ellipse, you see when we drop this type menu down, we have the four different sub shapes. I'm going to leave this one as an ellipse for now. And then I am going to close the properties window, I'm going to select that object, I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard, I'm going to click on the object and drag away. When I release the mouse, I now have a second object that's identical to the original. You can do a control C, control V to copy and paste, or you can do this as shorthand. And I will right click and go into properties. And now I'll change the style to show you the other three sub shapes we have under ellipse. So for chord, ring and arc, we have this orientation drop down where we can select between left, right, top and bottom, a combination of those four locations to give us the orientation of the shape. And for arc, and chord, and ellipse. And then for example, for if I have ring, if I reshape, you see that I can also adjust the angle or the pitch of the shape as well. Now I'll show a rounded rectangle. So once again, I go into graphics, select rounded, click and drag. And if I open it up, you see that I have border and background. And there is a caption button, however, it is disabled for the rounded rectangle, so we aren't able to put caption into that. And this works the same way where I can select whether it's a dashed or solid line or no line at all. And then, of course, no fill or fill. And then you'll see that there is an additional anchor point with the rounded rectangle. And this allows you to configure how round you want the corners of the rectangle to be. And then for the two polygons, I'll start with the closed. And for the polygons, there are two different ways to draw the shape. The first is if I click and release, I see that I have a starting point and then I can move my mouse to whatever location I want. If I do another click and release, you see that I now have a third line and it is connecting the start and the end points together because this is a closed polygon. So now I can click wherever I want, click and release, click and release. Then once I'm done, I will right click and that will end the drawing of the shape. And for this, if I go into the properties, I have the same options, fill and the border. And then if I wanted to change the shape, let's say that, you know what, this is too far down. I can simply grab this anchor point and I can move it and I can modify the shape after I've drawn it. I don't have to delete and redraw. And then the same holds true for the open polygon where I can click and release, click and release. And you see this time that the start and end points are not connected. This is the only difference between drawing the two polygons. And then if I go into the properties, I do not have a fill. And then for this, I can also grab an anchor and move it if I need to reshape. And then for the last method of drawing the polygons, I'll do an open for this one as well. If I hold down my mouse button and I start moving the cursor, you can see that now I can freeform the polygon. 
And then when I release, I now have the option to do a straight line. Then when I right click, I end the drawing. And you see when I do that, there are several more anchor points. And just like with the other ones, I can select this object, grab a specific anchor point, and modify the shape if I want. So I'm going to save this and close the screen, and then I will start the runtime. As soon as I hover my mouse over it, you see that I get my tooltip that shows up. So now I will show you how to draw a rectangle and enter in not only static text or caption, but also a tag to display dynamic data as well. So I'm going to go back into development. I'm going to leave the runtime open and then I'm going to open my header screen. And with the screen open, I'm going to go to the graphics menu. Select rectangle, click and drag. And now I have my rectangle placed on the screen. I will open the object properties. You see for this one, the caption button is enabled. So I'll click on that to open the caption dialog. And in this caption dialog, you have several different configuration fields. The first is the caption itself. Where we'll enter in the text that we want to see. So for example, uh, I want to show the date. I can use the system tag date to display it. And to do that, since this is a straight text field, I would encompass my tag in curly brackets. I'm just going to type in date. And if I want to show the time, curly brackets, time. But I also can display additional information as well. So if I wanted to show the IP address of my computer, I can use the built-in function, get computer IP, open and close parentheses, and we'll explain later why you need open and close parentheses for the functions, and then close curly bracket. And let's say I also want to show my computer name. I can also use the built-in function get computer name, open and close parentheses, close curly bracket. So now I can display the dynamic values of those four pieces of information during runtime in this rectangle. And then below the caption field, we have the option to select fonts. And this is based on the fonts that you have installed on your PC. Now this could vary based on what fonts you have installed on the PC you are using. So always be aware that if you have a special font installed that you want to use, that it is not only installed on the PC you're developing, but also on the PC where the application will be running. If you do not, you will most likely see a bunch of what looks like hieroglyphics or just garbage on the screen. That is typically because a font is missing from the operating system that the application needs. Then I can choose my style and my size, and then what color, any effects, and, and what script I want. And you see the sample here will change based on what I select. You will not see that change on the rectangle until we click OK on the caption. So I'm going to click Cancel and leave it as it is. And then next to the Fonts button, we have the Align selection. And this is just like in Excel or in Word where we can select how we want the text to be aligned. By default, it is center, meaning center top and bottom and center left and right. We can do top left, top right, top center. We can do the bottoms or we can do center right or left. I'm just going to leave it at the default of center. And then we have the options for if we want it to be multi-line and we have auto format. And with this checked, if the caption includes a decimal value enclosed by curly brackets, so for example, 1.23456, or a tag that is a real data type, uh, then the value will be formatted according to the virtual table created by the function set decimal points. By default, it's checked. Then we have wrap text, which is related to multi-line, which will automatically wrap the text when necessary. Then auto gray out. This means that when there's a command animation applied to the rectangle and that command animation is disabled, the rectangle will automatically gray out or look like it's disabled. Then we have a checkbox for enable translation. 
And this is used for the translation tool or multi-language. Uh, and when we get into the multi-language feature in another video, you'll see how this comes into play. But essentially what it does is with that box checked, anything that is put into the caption or text field of the object will then be put into the table for multi-language that you can then use as the reference for the multi-language translation. So now that we have that set, I'm going to click OK. And you see, once I come back into the properties, that my text shows up. Then I'm going to click out of it. I will save. And then you see, when I saved, it refreshed or restarted the runtime. And now I have my new object on the header screen. And you see that I have my date, and my time, and the time is in 24 hour. You need to use 12 hour. I will show you how to do that next. And I have my computer name and my IP address. But this doesn't seem to be good enough. Uh, it's not descriptive enough. So I'll come back into the caption. And next to get computer name, I'm going to put in computer colon space. And since this is a straight text field, that's all I have to do. I don't have to put into quotes. I don't have to do anything special to tell it. I just want to display this text. And then for get computer IP, I'm going to put in IP space address. Okay, so now if I click OK, I see that I have my new text show up in the rectangle. And if I save, even with the object properties box open, it refreshes and it comes up. Now I have computer and IP address. Okay, so now I will show how to modify the displayed time to show 12 hour format instead of 24 hour. So come back into development, come back into the properties, into caption, and I have a text file with the if function I need to use in order to accomplish this uh, open on another screen. I just copied it and now I'm going to paste it in in place of time. And what I will do is I'll go through this to kind of show you exactly what it does. So once again, like a tag, we have to put a function or in this case, an if condition in between curly brackets in order for it to detect that it is a function instead of just straight text. And the if condition, and if you've looked at Excel and you've done anything like this in Excel, this format will look similar. We have the if and then an open parenthesis to give us our arguments for the if condition the expression we want to evaluate in this case if the hour tag equals 0 equals 12 if it's true we display 12 and you see that the 12 is in quotation marks and that's because we're telling it we want this text instead of a value from say a tag and if it's false then we do another if where if it's less than 12 display the hour and if that's false then we display the hour minus 12 and the two parentheses to close it and then the curly bracket to close it as well and then a colon and now we are doing another function called format and when we get into vb script and we'll show you exactly how this works we're telling it to format the minute tag with two numerical digits so for example instead of showing a one or a two it'll show zero one or zero two then another colon and then we're doing the same format as the second and then I forgot to put a space in here. So I'll just simply put that in. And then another if condition to tell it whether to display AM or PM. Once again, AM or PM inside of quotes to tell it to use the text. And I will click OK. And you see that it shows up in the object. And you see now that it comes up and it shows that it, instead of 1329, it shows 129 PM. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact ProFace America Technical Support by phone at 1-800-289-9266, option 2, or by email support at profaceamerica.com. You can also visit our website, profaceamerica.com, for manuals, drivers, product FAQs, and other product and software information. Thanks again, and have a great day.